one in six women in Australia retires into poverty. And the reason for that is simply because women retire with roughly just over half as much superannuation as men. Why is this the case? Well, because when superannuation was invented, no one thought about what a woman's work-life patterns looked like. You're listening to the She Renovates podcast. You're listening to She Renovates, the podcast for women who want to renovate to create an income and a life they love. Hello, hello, everyone. So I have a lovely guest for you today, and we're going to be talking about, I think everyone, it's probably not every woman's, but most women's absolute dream is shopping till you drop, at, but build it, either paying down your mortgage or building your super in the process. So that is the definition of perfection. And so I want to introduce you to Pascal. And before I um, I hand over to Pascal, I just want to read um, your bio. Pascal Helia Moray, hope I said that right? Perfectly. Okay. Uh, has 25 financial services, um, years financial services, marketing and brand building experience. She's a seasoned entrepreneur. She is the founder of Grow My Money, a platform where you can turn your shopping cashback into mortgage or superannuation savings. Previously, Pascal has um, held senior roles and advised companies like JP Morgan Asset Management, BT Financial Group, BNP, Paribus, uh, ResMed Ventures, Investment New South Wales, and the Australian Gender Equality Council. Well, that's a pretty impressive lineup, Pascal. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Bernadette. <laughs> so um, before we get into it, do you want to give me the abridged version of who Pascal really is? Hmm, crikey. Um, how long have I got? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so... Um, I started, uh, I weirdly, I did an arts degree at Sydney University and I did a an honours an honours in French and it was actually that role or that interest that led me to working into the, with the French bank, BNP Paribas, where I somehow found myself in marketing communications and from there ended up doing marketing communications and product management at BT fun, Funds Management and then that role led on to JP Morgan Asset Management. But it was with really, I stepped out of the corporate world uh, from JP MAM to have children, as, as you know, so many of us do. And that's, um, I wanted to work and do something from home because I was looking, you know, raising the children. And that's when I started my own uh, e commerce business. And so that really schooled me in e-commerce and tech and startup and, and so on. That role led to others, led to advisory roles and, and so on and so on, which was really the um, where, you know, super awards, as it Grow My Money started off life as, um, which is really a combination of, you know, bringing together all the themes of, of my career, being, you know, financial services, uh, marketing, brand building and gender equality, all really uh, aggregated and... So that's that's the a bit about me from the the work front. Um, the uh, from on the personal front, um, I mentioned children. I have three children. Um, uh, the I've got twins who are thirteen, boy girl twins, and then I've got a little eight year old girl who's the the little surprise, the little delight. So uh, she's the, the gift that keeps on giving. Um, so in between full time work and three kids. Um, um, and my husband travels a bit. Um, it's it's a busy life, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. And so, just uh, let's step back to the French thing. So, yes. would you consider yourself a francophile? Oh, definitely, definitely, mm. yes. Um, we actually ended up, my husband and I, getting married in France. Um, it's just been one of those weird things you know I was given a French name none of my family is French but I was given a French name at birth Pascal and there's just been this weird uh sort of life you know life's key moments have been centered around France somehow so you know I, I was I started studying French at school I was good at it I ended up doing three unit French for the HSC I went on to study it at university wrote, wrote my um 
wrote my thesis in French, did honours. That led into the, working at the French bank. Let you know, I lived in Paris for a bit, um, and and then ended up weirdly getting married there as well. So, but yet I have not an ounce of French blood in me. Wow. <laughs> so it's just well, it's a weird. Thing. We're kindred spirits because I've always loved Paris. Is my favourite city, mm-hmm. and yes. I go there often. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just it is it's something quite magical about the oh, way okay. French the French do everything. So yeah, I'm certainly with you on that. And so we're going to talk about what was Supervest and now Grow My Money. Yeah. Um, and I w- I've been thinking that that was quite a courageous startup. And yes. now having heard your background, I can understand why you have gone that way. Do you want to tell us a bit around the thinking that went into sure. um, Super Awards? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's wind the clock back to about four or five years ago. Um, And I was um, working uh, for the Australian Gender Equality Council, which is an NFP dedicated to looking at the state of gender equality or inequality uh, in Australia. And I was director of communications. um, And at the council, we we worked with uh, government, um, corporates and the everyday. And the things have certainly improved now uh, under this government, but at the time, five years ago, things were looking pretty hairy. And from a, a gender equality perspective, we had Australia as a country had slid, I mean, 35 places on the world uh, equality scale or, or g- gender equality index over a very short amount of time, like 12 years. So there are some stats that you, you know, this group might be aware of, like, you know, the gender pay gap. Um, stands at still around 22% um, when we factor in, you know, bonuses, overtime, et cetera. You, this group may be aware of stats like, um, you know, one in five women by the age of 18 has, has been assaulted. But then there are fewer known facts and stats like as a country in Australia, we pay our daughters 27% less pocket money than we pay our sons. Random really? fact. True story. True story. It comes out of, I know, it comes out of a report, a Westpac report called um, Kids and Pocket Money or something like this. And the way that it was that it was calculated was that, you know, we, we say to little Jane, for example, oh, Janie, just unpack the dishwasher. But we say to little Johnny, little Johnny, I'll pay you $2 to take the garbage out. So there are so many inherent biases. And when um, the study looked at, um, you know, the total amounts paid to boys and the time spent doing them, it worked out that we were paying our daughters 27% less pocket money than we pay our, um, than we pay our sons. So that was one of the more surprising facts. But the um, other big fact, uh, you know, the data point that a lot of people aren't aware of is when it comes to women and superannuation. So the older woman in Australia is the fastest growing demographic of homeless people. So, and here is a frightening stat. So I would ask everyone to just hold on to their hats as I, as I recount this. Um, one in six women in Australia retires into poverty. So if you think of your group of girlfriends, you know, think of another five friends, one of you will retire into poverty. And the reason for that is simply because um, women retire with roughly well, just over half as much superannuation as men. Why is this the case? Well, because when superannuation was invented, no one thought about what a woman's work-life patterns looked like, right? So if you think about, you know, you, you're working and you're contributing to your super and then most a lot of women step out of the workforce to have children, of course, during which time they're not paid superannuation. And then when they do return to the workforce, it's usually um, on a part-time basis. So then they're contributing fractionally to their super. So I was was becoming increasingly aware of these stats in in my time at the Gender Equality Council and, and also, you know, was looking at you know, kind of the breakdown of, of our um, or the segmentation of our population uh, when it comes to workforce participation. And at the time, based on the last uh, census, 40% of the potential working population, female working population of Australia, was not in the workforce, 40%, which is huge. 
And FYI, that's a lot bigger than in other countries. So for example, in, in the US, it's 24%. So I th- I was I was looking at these pieces of data and saying, well, how does this reconcile? You know, we have got 40% of women not in the workforce and therefore not contributing to their super. And yet you have government that has been aware of this issue of women retiring into poverty for ooh, 20 years now and is not doing anything to fix it. And we're sliding backwards generally on when it comes to gender equality and there aren't any fixes and industry and government, what, what's their solution? They tell, hey, women, you should top up your super. And I just remember thinking, with what? <laughs> like, <laughs> how do you top up your super if you're not um, working? At the same time, there was this um, amazing research um, around, uh, it was a PwC report called uh, Understanding the Unpaid Economy. And it showed that um, if we put a dollar value on all the unpaid work women do, you know, looking after children and looking after the elderly and domestic duties, et cetera, et cetera, we'd add another $2.2 trillion to the economy every year. And I thought, well, this is nuts. Like Australia as a country is relying on women doing unpaid work to sustain itself. Um, But this is the price that women are paying. They're ending up homeless. Well, there has to be a better way. You know, if we wait for government to do anything, well, we'll be waiting another two decades. So there has to be some way that we can monetize all that um, all that unpaid work by channeling it into their super. So it was because of my e-commerce background and um, my previous startup experience, I thought, well, if we just take this affiliate marketing model where if we drive a sale or we, we you know, drive an, a, an online purchase, the retailer pays us and then we share that commission with the user, this is how we can achieve that. And that was really the start of Super Awards. Awesome. I think now I'm just going to go off um, topic a bit, but I actually, and I'm sure you would agree with me, I really believe that the problem problem really goes deeper in that women, those women's relationship with themselves around money. Like, yeah. Yeah. And I I do find it like quite frustrating when, you know, you know, sometimes in our community we'll have someone who is being really ripped off by, you know, someone in the real estate industry. Mm-hmm. But with even with all the coaching in the world, will not stand up for themselves. Mm. And I find that really like worrying because, you know, yeah. So there is such a need for um sort of an increase and to be honest with you personally i've been i've been affected by it myself i did not understand the superannuation process and yeah. should have been paying attention to it a lot earlier than mm-hmm. i did and um and which is fine because i have a mechanism for being able to look after myself but most women don't have that and i, I the other day i was looking at stats where Women, um, you know, in when women retire, thirty percent of them retire with no income. So what yeah. does that mean? They're dependent on someone for an income, Correct. and that's Correct. the worst thing in the world because Correct. most of those people they're dependent on are assholes. <laughs> most, but some, you know. I, I uh, without knowing them in detail, yeah, I would agree with you. But yeah, I, yeah. I fully, I fully agree. And and yours is is a very uh, common. Uh, attitude than it like you know so many so many women say oh you know it'll be fine he'll look after me you know so that's not where the commonality is but a lot of women do say that but where where you have shared commonality with a lot of women is just going oh I, I should be paying attention to my super and it's so complex it really is complex right um and it is just in you know I think government and industry have done a fantastic job of making it very complex and very, oh God, who, who wants to think about super? Who wants to talk about super? It's it's almost like a dirty word. Um, yeah. But but if there is one thing that is true about superannuation, remembering that I'm not a financial advisor, just contribute as much as you can, as early as you can. And you just you let compounding 
the magic of compound interest do the rest. And I'll tell you a very interesting story on on that front because it really, you know, for all the jargon and and so on, you just want as much in your retirement pot as you can manage because by the time you get to whatever the retirement age, 65, 70, it's better to have too much than too little, no? Absolutely. And also... I have too much super, said no one ever, right? So um, I'd rather be able to to have choices in, in my retirement than not. And if one of those choices means, you know, I leave the asshole that I'm with, then, <laughs> you know, so be it. Now, so true story. I talked a little bit about my background and my financial services background earlier. And one of my first jobs in when I was at BT Financial Group was literally writing the brochures about compound interest. And, you know, superannuation and so on. And I thought, you know what, I better do what I'm, you know, advocating. So at the age of 26, I think I was, um, I started doing salary sacrifice into my superannuation. And and BT was great in that they were um, salary, they were matching. So, you know, I would contribute an extra, let's say 2% of my salary and they would do one or whatever the numbers were. Then we fast forward to uh, moving to London and uh, working at JP Morgan um, and where I did the same. So I was salary sacrificing for, I think, a good 10, 10 years of my career. And, you know, when you're selling, you're not, you don't miss the money, right? Because you're not, it's not coming to you every month and it's just going across into your super and, and compounding. So my my husband um, earns significantly more than me, um, but it has only been in the last couple of years that the value of his super has actually overtaken the value of mine. And that is, remember that I've been in startup world now, right? Yeah. It's with, you know, <laughs> fluctuating yeah. salary, let's just say, yeah. um, for over a decade. Right. And I've been out of the work for big chunks of time because of having children, et cetera. So let's just think about that, that all the, the work, if we can call it that, the salary sacrifice I did for a period of a decade through my 20s and 30s has only just now been overtaken by the value of his super when he has worked full time at his salary for all those years. And it's so I am I am here to tell you that I am living proof. Congratulations, Pascal. That it works. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So let's ask you about um I want to ask you another question and feel free to say no if you don't sure. want to answer it because it's on the list. But I think that this is important because a lot of people think that people with businesses like yours are making mega bucks. And I know like most startups take many years to break even. Mm -hmm. Have you broken even? No. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm I'm, I'm happy to be very upfront about that. (laughs) So we all need to get behind you so you can break even and do more good work. (laughs) That's right. Awesome. Okay, so now you moved from Supervest to Grow My Money what what's that all about? Yeah, from so Super Awards, it was beautifully timed in that, although we didn't plan it this way, in that it launched just before COVID, right? And so COVID was peak online shopping. Right? <laughs> and the other thing about COVID was that miraculously, the topic of superannuation was on everyone's lips because of the early access to super measures. Well, I thought that all my Christmases had come at once because I I honestly never thought about the day that you would hear the everyday person talking about their super, right, you know, in casual conversation. But then the world, you know, came back to normal and then the focus on superannuation just completely fell away. And people were out and about and they were, you know, the other thing that had now happened, of course, is that the low uh, interest rate environments that we'd all enjoyed during COVID started falling away. And so as over the last 18 months, we've had 13 interest rate rises, right? And so what how that translates is that for a person with a $500,000 mortgage, um, they now have to find an extra $1,210 per month to for mortgage repayments because of interest rate rises. Let's not forget, and I'm sure you've seen all, you know, all the headlines and all the articles as well, you know, cost of living and supermarket gouging, et cetera, et cetera. So the what became clear to us um, was that 
super um, was no longer a burning priority for users as it had been throughout yeah. 2020, you know, 2021, et cetera. But now there was a different focus. And so we, we thought, okay, so what can we, what can we do to, to help, right? Because our mission as a as company is about sustainable response of future wealth creation. So we thought, hmm, why don't, why don't we, you know, we've built all this infrastructure, we've built all this amazing tech, you know, app, um, web platform, browser extensions, uh, in-store card linking, et cetera. We've created a, a system and, a, and a, effectively a pipe that connects retailers, a retailer cashback into superannuation. So we pay into any super account in the country. Why don't we just change the destination of that so that we are directing into people's mortgages? And so that was really how we iterated and evolved to become Grow My Money. Because when you start offering a mortgage cashback product, you can no longer be called Super Awards. <laughs> so uh -oh. in addition to launching a new product, we also had to rebrand. So uh, we now, Grow My Money offers cashback into mortgage or super. And we've got the app and the web platform and browser extensions and every everything that we can do to help you earn money into your mortgage or super. So how about you just walk us through the process now? Now, I know, obviously, if anyone's been watching telly, you would see that I have actually been a spokesperson. Yes. Grow my money. Yes. Uh, so I know. But um, for, for anyone listening, we would love to um, understand yeah. how it works. Yeah. Sure. So grow my money. So just download the app or um, sign up via growmymoney.com.au. Um, all that we ask when you sign up is just name, email, and phone number. You actually don't even have to provide us with your phone number. So once you've joined, joining is free, by the way. When you next, uh, you're thinking about um, shopping online, you come through the app or through the platform and uh, you select any of our retailers. So we, part of our secret sauce, I guess, is that we have some amazing retailers. So we have, gosh, um, Maya, Pet Barn, Apple, eBay, the iconic Priceline, Chemist Warehouse, the good guys, appliances online, all those Australia's leading retailers. Uh, all you do is when you, you've logged into Grow My Money, you select the tile. Let's say you're, you're selecting the tile for the iconic. You click on the tile. It pushes you to the iconic uh, website and then you purchase as normal. So the, the way it works is that um, the iconic is paying Grow My Money a commission for generating that, that sale. And we share that commission with you. So let's say I spend $1,000 at the iconic. The iconic pays $30 into my Grow My Money account. So whether it's smaller items or, or larger items, uh, you know, we see a lot of people buy big ticket items. You know, you can imagine, for instance, if you're doing renovations or kitting out a house, you know, we've got Freedom, we've got Yard Store, we've got Renovator Store, all those wonderful, you know, appliances online I already mentioned, designer appliances. So, you know, dishwashers. Um, dryers, or vacuum cleaners, the whole kit and caboodle, right? Um, so you're spending the money anyway. You may as well earn money into your mortgage or your super while you do so. So that's the that's the online component. And I should stress that um, by coming through us, you're not being pushed into a points inflated environment. You are not, you can still buy things on sale and earn cash back. And if that uh, retailer has a rewards program of their own, you'll still also earn their rewards, right? So all we are doing is just directing traffic for the retailer, for which the retailer pays us a commission and we share that with you. Now, we have uh, 550 online retailers. Last year, we also launched our in-store functionality, and that is very exciting. Um, so all you do is on our platform, you link your existing credit and debit cards. They may be for personal, they may be for business, hashtag just saying. And then when you um, are in, uh, you know, one of our in-store um, retailers, whether it's, I don't know, City Extra restaurant or Pablo and Rusty's and CBD or, um, you know, any dry cleaner or any of our um, install brands, we've got a thousand stores nationally. 
all you do is you pay with your linked card as you would normally, right? So there's no QR codes to scan. There's nothing like that. You just link your card with us and then pay at the retailer and then the cashback appears in your account. So let's say Bernadette has $40, you know, in her Grow My Money account. Now, Bernadette needs to tell us where she wants that paid into. So Bernadette either gives us her mortgage uh, details or her super details. And once we have those details, we just, we pay the money every month automatically, which is quite different to other uh, platforms where as a user, you are cashback platforms, where as a user, you have to log in, you actively have to request some money to come into your, whichever your PayPal account or however it works. So long as we have more than a dollar waiting to be paid across to you, we'll just pay it across every month. And so Bernard, as you so beautifully put it, (laughs) in the TV interview, you, you set it up and you forget about it. And, and that really is the point um, of what we do, because we want to make um, earning cash back as seamless and frictionless as possible. Can I just ask, can you put two credit cards in? Oh, you can put up to five. Oh, okay. Awesome. Yes. And as I say, they may be your own yeah, credit cards or debit cards, or they might be linked to the business account. And Certainly, we've got a couple of users who I think they they are definitely using their um, credit cards. <laughs> One person cannot travel that much. <laughs> it's So someone has found, um, you know, a loophole, we'll say, and that's fine. And so from our perspective, we, we're um, agnostic as to how people pay. We don't mind if it's credit or debit or PayPal or, you know, buy now, pay later. It really doesn't matter. The, to, to us, what matters to us is the fact that we need we need to be able to show um, to the retailer that we generated that sale for them, and then we are compensated for that. Amazing. And so, look, you've actually segued into my next question quite nicely. Have you got a case study, or you know, of someone who's done really well with? You know, I know you haven't been going very long, but you would have yes. a bit of a sense of. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yes. Well, I just. It, if I think about just, just even myself, um, so I channel all my money into my super um, and my present day value of cashback is something like $1,700, let's say. Now, because of compound interest, that seven that $1,700 is actually going to make a $36,000 difference to my oh. superannuation, right? So, um, and of course, for, for those who are channeling their their cash back into their mortgage, well, not only are they saving on the interest charged by their mortgage, but they're also saving time because their mortgage will now finish earlier. And I think that is such a that's such an exciting concept that that, that concept of financial freedom and you know having having your debt you know just paid down and paid off. It, it's very very exciting. It is, and I have to say, you're a polished presenter. Pascal, you've got all those calculations at, you know, at the ready, which is great. <laughs> yes. It's way more motivating if you think that what you're going to do is going to make a significant difference. Um, Absolutely. The question that Louise asked, and I'm not yes. sure, like this is a bit of how long's a piece of string, but I thought I'd pose it anyhow. What should we be aiming for? Targeting in our super. Like what yeah. would be it? you know, like an ideal sort of figure to be targeting? Yes. Um, This is an excellent question. Um, And what I, what I, so, and I don't want to sound wiffly waffly, okay, Hmm. because I'm not a wiffly waffly person, but. Okay, (laughs) waffle a little bit. (laughs) The thing is, everyone's retirement looks different. So Bernadette's retirement might be, a little, you know, pied a terre in Paris, right? Drinking coffee and dining out at a Michelin star restaurant every night. My retirement involves sitting, you know, lakeside, you know, next to Lake Como in Italy with the never ending glass of Aperol spritz in my hand. <laughs> but other people, um, maybe Louise's uh, retirement might be. Um, living beach side on, you know, the Tasmanian coast. For, so I guess what I'm trying to express is that th- these will these will all cost different amounts of money. So I think like a, a number of things, you need to kind of work out what you want your goal 
to look like in retirement and then work backwards from there. Now, however, what I would say is that ASFA, which is the Association for Superannuation Funds of Australia, has recently uh, upgra- upgraded, we'll call it, or revised their forecast for what a budget retirement looks like for a single person. And so what these calculations are is, you know, based on some assumptions, you know, the average person for a budget retirement, so that means, you know, no big overseas holidays, et cetera, um, can expect to need about $30,000 per year in retirement. Now, they obviously don't live in Sydney, but. Yeah, correct. Correct. But that, that is for a budget retirement. Yeah. And and they they also provide calculations for, you know, what a couple living together would expect. So on a on a couple's basis, on a per person basis, it's a little bit lower. Let's say it's 27,000 because there are economies of scale, right? However, 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 and I cannot stress this enough, and I have actually been lobbying industry um, on this topic, that those budget uh, calculations retirement budget calculations assume home ownership. There is, so no word of a lie, there is no uh, line item, right, for mortgage or rent in this budget. So I want to make that abundantly clear. I don't want to frighten anyone, but I do want to make it abundantly clear. And I find it ridiculous, and this is hence my lobbying, that when they go to the, (laughs) the, the trouble of, you know, budgeting oh, that you'll need $27.84 per, per week for medication, for example, where the heck is the provision for mortgage or rent? Um, and so I find it ridiculous. So let's say, let's say assume home ownership, which is actually not a good assumption to make, but let's work with it for now, $30,000 a year. Now, I guess this then depends on how old you or at which age you want to retire. Like if you're feeling like a very sprightly 75-year-old, then maybe you only want to be retired for perhaps 10 years, okay? So $30,000 $30, a year times 10 years equals $300,000. So there are a couple of key factors in here. You know, maybe maybe you want to retire early. Maybe you want to retire at 55. I don't know. But uh, in order to do that, you need to – let's also remember the average Australian woman now lives until age uh, 88, Okay. So whilst we all want to put our feet up <laughs> ASAP, the, the question is, well, might need to think it, well, I guess the issue becomes, let's think about that in the context of, you know, anticipated end of life, which I know, scary, um, but I really don't want to spend my end of life worrying or stressing about money or, or couch surfing or living out of my car. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's funny because we do quite a bit, uh, like we do quite a, a lot of tutorials and things about like renovating retirement. And so but my personal view is that you do need to, it, you know, depending on what age you are, have a plan for getting your mortgage paid off because yeah. that's going to be the thing that is going to make the biggest impact on your retirement. And then it gives you sort of equity that you can access to generate Correct. more income. So I, I really, and I just get really annoyed with, you know, the, the age old thing about um, the Robert Kiyosaki saying your home is not an asset. And like to a sophisticated investor, maybe not, but for like 90%, Correct. Oh, yeah, it, it absolutely is, and it needs to be given the attention that it requires to for it to do what it was set out to do, which is nurture you for your life. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's. Um, I think- Louise, I hope we answered your question there. I can see another question from yes, Fiona. That, oh, I'm glad. Which you is a good that. one. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, Fiona. Can people use this if they live overseas is Fiona's question. And the answer is yes. Um, so long as you are uh, have a, an Australian super fund or an Australian mortgage or offset account, but you happen to be living overseas, um, so long as you channel the money, the cash back, into a, a local a super or mortgage account, that's fine. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so we're, we're sort of running out of time. So I've just got two more questions that I want to ask you. 
Um, I think you've answered this, but I'll give you the opportunity to clarify. Sure. What sets Grow My Money apart from other cashback and reward programs to Australians? So this is a really important one for us. And the thing that sets it, well, we have two key or a few key points of difference, really. So number one, we're Australia's first mortgage cashback provider. Or as, as Channel 9 referred to us last night, Bernadette, we're world first. <laughs> so oh let's, let's take that. Love we'll that. take that. Um, and then, um, but we do have this focus on mortgage and super. So both, these are both, you know, these are life's greatest assets. So I think I mentioned it earlier, we, we have a real focus on um, responsible and sustainable future wealth creation. And that's really important to us because whilst there are other cashback platforms out there, they are cash back into bank, you know, you know, every day or cash back into PayPal. And we all know that if you consume your money, it can't grow, right? And that's one of the things that I really want to stress again that with our platform is that the dollar you cash back now is not just a dollar because it's going to your super, your mortgage, it's becoming 10x, right, or 15x, whatever it may be. It's like, you know, the example I gave you with my own account, $1,700 present day value becomes $36,000 in the long run. So um, it's really, for us, it's the focus on that future wealth creation. And the other differentiator that I think I also mentioned before is that with other cashback platforms, you have to log in, make an effort to withdraw your funds. But we don't do that. So long as there's more than a dollar um, in your Grow My Money account waiting to be paid across, we'll just pay it across. Because guess what? It doesn't serve us any purpose to hang on to your money. There is no nothing in it for us at all. So it is far better for the user, for you as a user, if it's sitting in your super where it's compounding or if it is, you know, offsetting your mortgage and reducing your interest. Beautiful. You've um, covered that very well. And the last one is okay. what do you see um, looking forward for Grow My Business? Grow Money. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Gosh. Um, yeah, L look, we've got some uh, more product innovation planned. And so that's my that's my wheelhouse. Um, we've got some exciting uh, product developments and features being launched um, within the next couple of months. So that's exciting. Um, but really, our vision is just to get into the households of as many Australians as possible um, to help, you know, alleviate the cost of living, to help avoid that mortgage stress. I, I read a fascinating stat the other day. There's 1.53 million Australians at risk of mortgage stress at the moment, 1.53 million. And that is because of this perfect storm of, you know, interest rate rises and, and cost of living uh, escalation. And so really we're, we're trying to help as many people as possible have a um, – a, a more stress-free life financially, whether that translates into, you know, short, you know, helping with mortgage repayments on a, a more short-term basis or a, a more comfortable retirement for 20, 25 years. Wow. So, well, thanks so much for coming on, Pascal. So for anyone listening now uh, or listening to the replay or watching the replay, or eventually this will get published on our podcast and in our YouTube channel. If you, um, firstly, you need to sign up yourself. It just makes no sense not to. Um, <laughs> That's right. Two negatives make positive. Um, <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, also if you want to share it with your friends because I think that it's um, it's it's a really amazing idea and I love the difference it's going to make to, well, not just women, to all Australians who choose to take it on. So thanks so much, Pascal. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure, Bernadette. You are very welcome. This is the She Renovates podcast. To discover how to harness the power of renovating, check out theschoolofrenovating.com.